What if we have an X9C series digital potentiometer and a rotary encoder and we just want to be able to use the rotary encoder with this digital pot at least temporarily just to see how it works and be able to use it like an analog pot. Maybe we don't need fancy logic circuitry, let alone a processor with software. How about some good old RC debounce? So this is the circuit where on the encoder module, they call the first one clock, I'm calling it A. They call the second one data, I'm calling it B. So when you're moving clockwise, A will go low first, then B, etc. So if we hook it up like this, aside from the circuitry, every time A goes low, it will generate an action on the digital pot to do an increment either up or down based on the up-down pin which B is connected to. So in clockwise motion, A goes low and at that moment in time, B happens to be high for clockwise. So when A goes low and triggers a count, it's going to count up because up is high, down is low. If we go counterclockwise, B is going to go low first. So eventually when A goes low and triggers the digital pot to do an increment, B will already have been low. So B is going to be set for the down direction and we will increment downward for counterclockwise. So what's actually happening in the circuit? This is the rotary encoder A and B switches. They have an onboard 10K pull up each, but we want to do the debounce, so 10K times 50 nanofarads equals about 500 microseconds of charge time to get to about 66% charge toward 5 volts. So if these switches are being pressed and everything is stable, so this capacitor has been discharged through the switch to ground, then we release the switch. The capacitor is connected through a 100 ohm and a 10K to 5 volts and it will charge up at about 500 microseconds. The 100 ohm is relatively negligible in the time constant compared to a 10K. When we hit the switch and we bring this to ground, we override this 10K pull up and we're really trying to short a capacitor across ground but through a 100 ohm resistor. Again, that's kind of a negligible time constant. It's going to go really quickly, but it'll limit the current through the switch. I'm not sure the rating on these typical rotary encoders, but I think I saw one that said the contacts can do 100 milliamps. So I thought, I'm going to limit this to 50 milliamps. 5 volts across the capacitor, trying to do a short circuit through the switch. If we have 5 volts and we throw a 100 ohm limiting resistor, 5 volts divided by 100 ohms is 50 milliamps. So that should be safe for the contacts and shouldn't really interfere with our debouncing operation. On the output resistor side, again, if we're going clockwise, we're incrementing in the up direction. As far as the digital pot's concerned, up means the wiper is moving toward the high resistor side. So the wiper keeps going more this way every time you go clockwise, and more this way as you go counterclockwise. So if I put a meter across the wiper and the low resistor, every time I go up clockwise and I'm moving further away, the wiper is going to have more resistance to the low side. So I'm going to see resistance go up as I go clockwise and as I go counterclockwise and the wiper comes closer to a short circuit to RL, I'm going to see resistance go down as I go counterclockwise. I'm looking to capture a normal rotary encoder switch pulse without any debouncing just to check the timing as well as how bad the bounce can be at certain times. So when I rotate slowly at a reasonable rate just to go one intentional movement, I get maybe two to three milliseconds between each edge of each output A and B, or longer, sometimes six or seven milliseconds. So if I rotate more quickly just to try and intentionally do two or three rotations, I still get around 
two milliseconds between rising edges or falling edges. Sometimes I can get close to one millisecond, slightly more than one millisecond between rising edges. And if I go ridiculously fast, which is unrealistic anyway for proper operation of the rotary encoder, I still end up with, on average, two milliseconds between rising edges on the outputs. Let's try and generate some contact bounce and see how that looks. So that was an exaggerated slow turn and it allowed the one output to kind of bounce around for two milliseconds. So what if I just try normal rotations and see if I can catch a more normal looking bounce. So there was a motion where it looks like it's within 500 milliseconds. Right here it takes about half a division for all this bouncing with one millisecond per division. So I went exaggeratedly fast again and on both of these rising edges I got maybe up to half a millisecond, so 500 microseconds. Now I've added the RC filter and let's see the difference. So an RC time constant of 500 microseconds would mean that after 500 microseconds we should be somewhere just over 3 volts out of our 5 volt signal rise. So right here, 2 volts of division 3 volts would be here, and that's about halfway through our 1 millisecond division, so it looks about right. It looks like we rose about 3 volts within 500 microseconds. So now let me just try to get some contact bounce, as well as some closer timing signal edges here, just to see if it looks reliable enough when we are causing this kind of a lag. So there's a normal slow rotation and we have lots of time. This yellow trace is going high first and by the time it gets definitely at 5 volts the other trace is only barely starting to rise and eventually it'll register oh it's time to check this one and yeah it's definitely high. So that's the kind of thing I'm looking for. What happens when the timing here gets closer? I've tried many rotations and this is about as close as I can seem to get it. So we have one rising edge starting and then maybe one and a half milliseconds later the other rising edge starts. So if this lower trace is starting to rise at this point in time, we want to acknowledge that there was a low on the top trace. So by the time we get high enough to have registered a high, we still have a good low on the top trace. So the timing and setup and hold and everything looks like it works out here. And zooming out to get a better picture, we can see the falling edges are relatively sharp because all we have is a 100 ohm resistor in line with the capacitor straight to ground so it can discharge really quickly. And on the rising edge with 50 nanofarads, it does take a little longer. So these I think are the closest rising edges I've seen so far. With our timing circuit here we can analyze it. So I put a cursor on each channel right before it starts to go high. So that's where they would have instantly went high if there was no time delay on it. And they are delta x 1.08 milliseconds apart. And so let's just track along here. If I go to about 2 volts on each each one's about 2 volts up their slope now and they are still 1 millisecond apart so they're kind of right in step 1 millisecond apart. In the datasheet for the X9C digital pots the threshold voltage for registering a low to high transition is minimum 2 volts so 2 volts or higher is considered a logic high. So I've got the cursor as close as I can get, which is 2.16 on the one that I want to trigger on. So when I go high to 2 volts here, at this point in time, I want this channel to definitely have had time to rise to a definite high, 2 volts or more. So let's line these up. And at the same point in time, delta time is 0 seconds, when channel B goes from low to high and gets to at least 2 volts. Channel A has already gotten pretty much to a full high 4.72 volts. 
that would register a proper high, so our setup and hold has been met. It only takes a couple of microseconds actually to register a setup and hold in the chip. So that's roughly how I would go about putting together a quick circuit that can help me directly hook up a digital pot to a rotary encoder and be reasonably sure everything looks good. I wouldn't necessarily design this for production like this, but on the bench, it works. So here's the final circuit with the digital potentiometer and the rotary encoder, the debound circuit, including the 100 ohm series resistors to help limit the current through the switches to about 50 milliamps. I have the wiper of the pot and I have the low side of the pot. So resistance should go up when I go clockwise, it should go down when I go counterclockwise, and because I'm debouncing it should be relatively smooth, give or take a few misses. So by chance I powered up at 73k from wiper to resistor low. Well, let's start going clockwise and see if we can increase. About 1k per motion. I just did two, so that's it went from 73 to 75k. I'll try to go one at a time. 76, 77k, 78k, 79k. Okay, I'll try going counterclockwise, so I should go down by 1k each time. 78k, 77k, 76k. So it's generally working nice and clean. I can uh, try going quickly. I'm not going to be surprised if it messes up, but generally I should be going down in resistance if I'm going counterclockwise quickly. And I went down to about 67k. So in realistic terms, even if you've got a proper application for this, you're properly debouncing in software and all of that, you can't really expect it to be clean. You just know that you tried to go hardcore low, you ended up somewhere low. If you want to go more accurately, Let's go one at a time, and you should have more control. Now if I want to start going quickly up from about almost 57k, I went to 60, 68, 79, and if I go slowly, I just go by 1k, 80, 81, 82. Let's try doing three okay speed. So I should go toward 85. 1, 2, 3. And it went to 85. 1, 2, 3. 87. I don't know if I got a clean one. I felt it kind of stall. I'll try to go 3 again. 1, 2, 3. And we went to 90. Now, if I take out the debounce capacitors, now it's just directly connected from the encoder through current limit resistors, but no timing. So it should be more close to the raw, grounded signals. Okay, it went up, and up, and it kind of stayed that time. It looked like it wanted to go up, but it came back. I'll go up again. Okay, up, hmm, up. Oh, I went up by one and it went down almost 10. So you can see right away, the capacitors really clean this up. So, just a quick fix to get started. By chance, with the increment and the high, low, up, down, select button, the way they work, you can almost directly interface it with a rotary encoder just by how it works.